Hello, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for joining me today. And sorry for moving around a little late. So today, I'm wearing green, uh, quite intentionally, uh, in honor of my friend, Joseph Joey Wood, who would have turned 15 years old today. Uh, last Saturday, we laid Joey to rest after a lifetime battle with childhood illnesses. Joey was often sick, in pain regularly, hospitalized constantly, yet he worked and participated in community service activities to include feeding those in our community that needed it. In fact, the evening before he passed away, he was present at a senior feeding event. He was too weak to get out of the vehicle, but he remained on site in the vehicle until he got too sick and had to be immediately transported to the hospital uh, where I had the opportunity to visit him in the emergency room and he passed away early the next morning. So I, I proclaimed this day in his honor. Uh, and Team Joey is wearing green today as I am to salute the legacy of this amazing young man who in 14 short years uh, made a significant contribution to this community, uh, taught us how to live, taught us how to laugh, uh, taught us how to love. And so uh, in memory of him and a salute of his family, uh, I offer uh, this day to my friend. I also want to extend uh, my deepest uh, concern to the Savannah police officer who was involved in a tragic vehicle accident this weekend. The officer is in stable but serious condition and is currently and actively being treated. I visited this officer in the hospital this weekend and I've also communicated with his parents who are also here. And I can tell you that he is surrounded by his family and loved ones and the Savannah Police Department who have not left his side since this incident occurred. I want to thank the Georgia State Patrol uh, for taking the lead in this accident. And we are working with the Savannah Police Department to make sure that the driver who caused this is brought to justice. I'm out of respect for the family of this officer and certainly their wishes we will not release his name at this time, and we ask for privacy for the family as this officer recovers. And I'm asking you, our community, to all lift a prayer uh, for this, this public servant, who certainly is in need of our prayers. I do know that he has the best care available, and so we salute the medical professionals that are attending to him. This unfortunate incident reminds all of us uh, that our officers take a risk every day, not only actively engaging uh, in stopping criminal activity, but even going to and from, driving every day. Um, and so we also want to make sure that we remember our first responders, both on the police side and our fire side. I will, though, take this opportunity to remind our community of the City Council's Vision Zero Initiative, which is our strategy to eliminate all traffic fatalities and severe injuries while increasing safe, healthy, equitable mobility for all. We believe through Traffic Zero that traffic deaths and fatalities are preventable, and we seek to create a systems approach to prevent severe and fatal crashes. That being said, I'm sure that our friends at Mothers Against Drunk Driving will want me to remind all of you that during this holiday season, that driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs is illegal 
and potentially fatal. Driving under the influence is just as dangerous as a shooting or rape or aggravated assault, and I believe that we should treat these incidents as the serious incidents that they are, and they should be treated as the potentially life-destroying incidents that they are. And so we take them seriously, uh, and we will be continuing to lift these incidents up seriously as well. Which is why this past weekend, the Savannah Police Department teamed up with the Georgia Officers Office of Highway Safety, the Georgia State Patrol, and the local highway enforcement of aggressive traffic units to conduct the Thunder Task Force focusing on enforcing all traffic laws. The streets were hot in Savannah this weekend, and the Thunder Task Force had a successful weekend, issuing 594 citations and 158 warnings. These intergovernmental task forces are important and they help to save lives. So although they were successful, I wish they were not as successful because that means there were 594 opportunities uh, in which we could have done better. And certainly 153 opportunities, 158 opportunities where um, there should have been no warning at all. That means we, had, we can do better. So I'm thanking all of the agencies that are involved and a special thank you uh, to uh, Chief Gunther and the Savannah Police Department for all the great work that they do every day to keep our streets safe. And we're gonna continue and we're gonna have the uh, Rolling Thunder Task Force back in Savannah again and again and again until they have a weekend that is not successful because they didn't catch anyone drinking under the influence, no one driving under the influence, no one without a seatbelt on or distracted driving or any of those things. We're going to continue to work uh, for that day. This past weekend, uh, City Manager Jay Melder and I had the privilege of lighting the first candle on the menorah at our annual Hanukkah festival with our Jewish brothers and sisters. So a big thank you to Rabbi Zalman Refson uh, and also to Alan Solander of the Jewish Educational Alliance uh, and all of those who attended. And we wish a happy Hanukkah, a happy festival of lights to everyone who celebrates. And I join everyone in prayer for peace. We've all seen the bloodshed happening a world away our hearts are broken for all of those who are suffering right now, uh, and we know that it's a dark time. But we also are reminded by the Festival of Lights that light always outshines darkness, and darkness cannot exist in the presence of light. So we are praying for a quick resolution and a peaceful end to the wars plaguing our human brothers and sisters across the globe, everywhere. We are praying and working for peace. I also want to remind everyone uh, about a wonderful event happening this weekend. Um, my friends, uh, Pastor Charles and Pastor Yolanda Roberson and the Kingdom Life Christian Fellowship will again be hosting blessings on the Southside giveaway. And they are serving this community by providing 1,000 grocery boxes and 1,000 free gifts to family and children who attend while supplies last. Uh, and this is a wonderful opportunity uh, for our local community. Uh, and we want you to join us out there this Saturday. And we want to thank all of our faith community members um, that during this year and all year long really go above and beyond. Um, they work with communities. They are engaged in ministry, uh, be it a church, be it a synagogue, be it a temple, be it a mosque, um, and they are doing the work that they have been commissioned to do, and I want to thank them uh, for being a part of our greater community. Uh, blessings on the South Side will be held from 10 to 1 or until supplies last on Saturday, December 16th at 425 West Montgomery Crossroads. Um, I've been there before. Um, if you wait till 10 o'clock, you're too late. <laughs> Just clearly, you're too late. So. Get out there early and exercise some patience and grace. I also want to remind everyone that the Georgia Bright Solar Lease Program 
We'll be offering a new incentive through the end of this year. New participants who sign up for a lease before December the 31st, 2023 will receive a $200 gift card. Additionally, the Georgia Bright program is now open to nonprofit organizations in the Savannah area. Back in September, we announced our partnership with this incredible program designed to reach low to moderate income homeowners across our state and provide an easy avenue to install solar panels on their house. To qualify, Savannah residents must own their own home, must have a roof in good condition, and must have a gross annual household income of $100,000 or less per year. If you're interested, we encourage you to visit savannahga.gov forward slash bright savannah. savannahga.gov forward slash bright savannah. Last year, I mean, sorry, last week, uh, <laughs> the city council uh, held our next to the last meeting of the year and we made some huge strides on some key issues uh, for this administration. And we now have a budget. We have an approved budget that I'm very proud of that passed on an eight to one vote. Um, and I want to thank city manager Jay Melder, uh, the team, uh, budget and finance teams and Team Savannah for the hard work they put into this budget that really wanted us to create opportunities uh, for our community through investing in our citizens. As I've said before, um, a budget is a legal document because we have to have a budget uh, by the end of the year, but it has to be a moral uh, document as well. And so we are investing in Team Savannah. Next year, we're pouring more into our services for our residents without raising taxes or drawing on our reserves. And this is good government at work. I am very proud of this 139th administration. We have not raised taxes uh, at all over the last four years, despite some extraordinary circumstances. Um, and so the council uh, should be applauded for that work. The team should be applauded for that work and certainly our residents uh, for allowing us to be very clear and intentional about uh, the things that they want for their communities. Uh, we also approved the new zoning for the Kaya House a renovation, which is a remarkable move, which will restore a key community asset as we continue our push to invest in the Kyla Brownville Historic District. And so I am very thankful to our partners at the Galvin Foundation and the Historic uh, Savannah Foundation for their partnership, uh, for their collegialism, and for their great work. I, I can't tell you how proud I am of the great work that this council has done over the last four years. Uh, we will close out this administration next week with one more meeting before our new administration takes over uh, in January. And my last press conference of the year uh, will be on uh, next Tuesday. I think uh, even our marketing and communications team needs a break. Uh, but we're only getting started. Over the next four years, we will continue to go hard in the paint for you. We will continue to work hard for you. Uh, the residents of the greatest city on earth um, will continue to see investment in key uh, services, building infrastructure, focusing on housing and homelessness, and so much more. And I look forward um, to working with the new mayor and the new incoming council as we continue the work of shaping our city to not only be a great place to visit, but most importantly, a great place to live. And we will do that by inviting everyone to the table, by being inclusive, by hearing everyone out, uh, and by governing with common sense. And so I'm proud to be the mayor of the 139th administration. I will be even prouder to be the mayor of the 140th administration, and I am looking forward to the new year. And finally, uh, you know, the weather is here. Winter is uh, on its way next week. And as you know, Savannah uh, has challenges with weather. Uh, it could be torrentially raining one day, it could be 70 degrees the next day, it could be 40 degrees the next day. Uh, we have to make sure that we are prepared uh, for the quickly evolving weather of Savannah. Uh, thanks to the cold front that moved through on Sunday, we're looking at chilly temperatures for the remainder of the week. 
And so this time of the year is really dangerous for house fires as we uh, turn on heaters, as we plug in holiday lights, as we uh, light up Christmas trees, and we bundle up an extra blanket. So it's important that we pay extra attention uh, to fire safety. Fires we know can happen fast, uh, and they move fast, and we want to make sure everyone is aware of the dangers that can spark a fire. As you know, the Savannah Fire Department, the greatest fire department uh, in the world, began the Keep the Wreath Green initiative. And so our goal, our committed goal, our stated goal over this holiday is that we want to keep every single bulb in our reef green by, by not having any preventable fires, structure fires. So we want people uh, to be safe, we want the structures to be safe, and we want everyone to be prepared uh, for this weather. For more information on being prepared for winter weather, visit ready.gov forward slash winter hyphen weather, ready.gov forward slash winter hyphen weather. So that ends my prepared remarks, and I will now entertain any questions you may have on this next to last presser for the year. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. Uh, I know staffing shortages and law enforcement are being felt nationwide, but given the more recent uptick in violent crime, do you think Savannah residents could ever expect to see a fully staffed police department? Of course, and we, we continue to work with that. Um, I, I'm glad that you mentioned, and I think it needs to be adequately reported, that this is not unique to Savannah. This is across the country, um, and I think if you look at our statistics, we're seeing a, a true tide change because we're now actually gaining more officers than we're losing. Um, and so that is a sign that our recruitment efforts are working well. We will continue to, to recruit, but be very clear. Um, my position, not only as a former law enforcement officer, but also as a human resources professional, and now as mayor, is that we're not going to hire police just to fill positions. We don't want warm bodies just to have warm bodies. And I'm not going to sacrifice quality for quantity. And so there are a lot of people that we could hire that we're not going to hire because either there's a character issue or there's a judgment issue. We're not going to cut corners for the sake of saying we have a fully uh, funded, a fully staffed police department. We know what happens when you hire uh, quantity over quality. You have incidents uh, where judgment is an issue. You have issues of negligent hiring. Um, and so for me, um, I want us to take our time, as the song say, and do it right. Um, and we can do it, baby. Do it tonight. We're going to hire um, the best we can find, um, not only locally, um, but across the nation. Um, and, and, and we will have a fully staffed department. Uh, what specific challenges are recruiters facing in trying to fill out the department? Well, I think it's a lot of things. Um, the first thing is that, you know, at one point, I remember where uh, the most honored professions in the community uh, was that of a clergy member, uh, those of a teacher, those of a police officer, those of a firefighter. Um, and nowadays, the public scrutiny over law enforcement officers um, is just so um, overwhelming that people don't want to do that. I mean, it's like, why would I go out and put my life on the line every single day just to be unduly criticized or to have a wide net cast over all police officers? Whenever there's an incident of one police officer in another jurisdiction, then we're all being judged by that same thought. So, I mean, you know, there in other communities have been a fundamental distrust of law enforcement. Um, you know, some of it warranted due to the actions of a police officer or systems. Um, but, you know, people figure they can, they can make the same amount of money doing something less dangerous, then they'll do it. But we want people uh, who feel the passion, uh, feel the ministry, if you will, uh, of serving their community uh, as a law enforcement officer. Uh, it is a unique calling. It is a specific calling. We have people who get into it and realize it's not for them. And if that is the case, we don't want them to remain because that's, that's how people get hurt. Uh, we need people who have the passion 
Uh, and it's a profession that you, you get to grow in. But it does take a personal toll. It takes a family toll. Uh, and, you know, nowadays people don't really want to do that. And so we recognize that. Um, I'm excited that we have increased our uh, pay for our law enforcement officers, and that'll be going up um, in a really significant way. Uh, we've created a variety of retention initiatives to help keep people here. Um, but, you know, it's a challenging time for police officers, uh, like it's a challenging time for politicians. Um, people don't want to go through all that. Just say, look, I'll go work somewhere else and make you know just as much money without the headache. Final question. Are there any specific goals set for recruitment heading into the next year? Uh, our goal is to be able to be 100%. Um, some of that is limited because we, we compete with other agencies around uh, the region uh, for a police academy. Um, it takes about a year to have an officer um, from the street onto the streets um, to include extensive background checking and application process um, to include making sure that uh, a police academy class is available, uh, then to go through the academy class, then to go through the Savannah Police Department's um, after uh, academy training, field training. Um, so it, it takes quite a long time. So. Um, what we'll see at the beginning of the year are officers that we've recruited from earlier this year. And so uh, it's just an ongoing thing. And then you have officers that are able and eligible to retire, and they do. So there's a national ebb and flow and attrition that occurs uh, with police officers uh, and firefighters, and we accept that. And so we try to stay ahead of the curve, which is why you'll often see uh, police agencies overhire, because we know we're going to have attrition. Thank you. Thank you. Morning, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. At the recent State of the Ports address, um, they announced plans to raise the Talmadge Bridge. Uh, that's now changed to, I guess, fully replacing it. Um, do you have any insight as to what led to that? <clears throat> um, we know that um, the commerce is continuing to grow here. The ports are continuing uh, to uh, grow here. We know that uh, there are challenges. Um, I know that we have deepened um, almost as far as we probably can safely dig. Um, and so the bridge is now the impediment in the way. This is relatively a young bridge um, as far as bridges go. And so I heard about it uh, as you all heard about it as well. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm always concerned about uh, the infrastructure of the city of Savannah. On, on both sides of the bridge. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of see how that goes. Obviously, um, we're very um, interested and we want to be engaged uh, in that dialogue at the front end about how all this occurs so we can um, really anticipate the impacts to our city and to our residents. Really, and you, know, you mentioned when we have these you know, weekends, whether it's a lot of crime or just violence in general, that our, you know, our police department obviously plays a part in preventing that. But you've also mentioned in the past just community figures that kind of play a role in stepping in and, you know, whether it's serving as a mentor or literally stepping in. Um, how important are those people? Well, it's very important. I mean, I think the other part about it is um, what we're seeing also a lot of incidents that occur are domestic nature. Um, you know, we're not in people's homes. Um, and, again, we know that when you have conflict um, and you don't have people to be able to step in, uh, to diffuse, um, to kind of get both opposing sides to their corners, to take a breather, and you have the presence of a gun. Uh, oftentimes, an illegal gun or a gun obtained illegally, uh, we know we have these types of problems. Um, and again, we can't police that. Um, we have to become um, armies of one. You know, when we see these things happening, um, if we're concerned about it, oftentimes I've found out that you know, we've had these very um, violent events. Um, people knew about it for weeks on social media. Oh, yeah, it was right there. Everybody knew about it. Well, we need to really start finding ways to intercept that and try to diffuse. Uh, it does not help us if everybody knows about it and we don't know about it. Um, you know, if you know someone who is a hothead, a person that 
has a weapon, uh, they have the propensity to use a weapon, um, you know, then we, you know, the fact is, you know, crying over a casket or in a courtroom, um, and it could have been prevented. Um, I think we have to really exercise that prevention. And if you can't handle it yourself, you know, we have resources in the community to say, hey, look, this, this situation really concerns me, and, and we can get some professionals in there to help to defuse it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from our Facebook uh, community? We're glad to have them on Mayor Johnson SAV um, and the city of Savannah as well. But there are no questions, all right. Well, thank you all so much. Um, let's try to stay warm, let's try to stay safe, and let's try to stay Savannah strong. God bless.